As far as bad PC ports go, GTA 4 might spring to mind, so why don't we throw some high-end hardware at it and see what kind of performance we get. PC specs if you're wondering, we're rocking a 13700K and an RTX 3080 10GB. It's not the highest end PC by today's standards, but it shouldn't have any problems playing a game from 2008, which is 16 years ago, right? Well, performance was a bit better than what we were expecting, given the stigma of GTA 4's PC port, because 130 FPS on average is certainly a playable experience, and by the way, we're running it maxed out at 1440p, as that's the resolution I use. Albeit though, with this hardware, with the age of the game, you should probably expect a bit more performance than that, and especially that with the 1% lows as well, because 80 ish here is not particularly the best metric. It means that there's quite a bit of stutter in this game, which is something that GTA 4's PC port was pretty infamous for. So, is it playable? Definitely, for the most part. Can it be better? I think so. And this is where DXVK comes in, and the best way to describe it is it's essentially a translation between DirectX, in this case, version 9 to Vulkan, and from what I can recall, it's quite useful for Linux gamers and Arc users that are playing older DirectX titles, but that is something I can work on in a future video, so make sure you stay subscribed for that. We are trying to reach 10k by the end of the year, so you would really help out and you wouldn't miss out on that video either. Anyways, to install it, we need to go to this thread on Nexus Mods, download the files, and then drop them into the same directory as GTA IV. EXE. It's also possible you can get the 512 megabyte VRAM glitch for GTA 4, which is very annoying, but you can fix it pretty easily. You can put a command which changes the available memory to the amount of VRAM on your graphics card or whatever amount you want to set, and you can put that in a text file in the main directory where all the other files have been dropped, or you can put it in your launch arguments before you launch it if you've got it on Steam. Only the latter worked for us in today's video but the command line.txt should work. So was this effort worth it? And I would say for the five minutes of work that we did, definitely, because we gained almost 40 FPS on average, which was quite a big jump considering the effort we put in. And the 1% lows also see a bit of a boost going up by almost 10 frames per second. So the game's running at a higher average frame rate and it's also running slightly smoother as well. And for the five minutes of work we put in, I would say this is definitely worth it. But we've got one further tweak which can make this game run quite a bit better and that's by limiting the frame rate. Yes, this might seem a bit counterintuitive, but bear with me on this one. I think this can fix a lot of bad PC ports or maybe at least improve your gaming experience. Where you limit your frame rate is totally up to you, but I like to stick around the 90-ish FPS mark for story games, but 60 FPS is also a good target as well. But a general rule of thumb is, make sure it's below the sort of average frame rate you're getting, as this will help with smoothing out the frame rate. And you can also do this on a per game basis. All you need to do is go to Revertuner, click Add, and then search for your game's executable. In this case, it's gtaiv.exe, and then add your max FPS value. And when this is done, man, the performance gets so much better. Yes, the average has gone down to 90 FPS from like 160, but more importantly, those 1% lows are, well, the same as that average frame rate. This means the game is running incredibly smooth, and I'd wager, this is a much better gaming experience for you as well. As 1% lows are much more important for performance, at least in my opinion, because it signifies how smooth the game's running. A lot of modern titles will have absolutely awful 1% lows, <clears throat> looking at you, Unreal Engine 5, terrible engine. So this is why having 1% lows is so important because you don't want your game stuttering all over the place. But regardless, I think you'd have a much better gaming experience while locking GTA 4 to like 60, 70 or like 90 FPS compared to leaving it unlocked and having a bit more of a stuttery experience. I think the lower frame rate and the smoother 1% lows is a much better gaming experience, at least if you ask me. 
Well, I think we can agree that GTA 4's PC port is arguably one of the worst ports in the history of PC gaming. Maybe Saints Row 2 is a bit worse, and that might be one that I might make a video on soon. But if you've got modern hardware with these fixes and these tweaks, you can get a decent gaming experience because GTA 4 is probably one of the best games released of all time. It's just a shame that the PC port had very bad technical problems. Anyways, if you want to see how I built the PC, which I ran GTA 4 on today, you can watch that in a video up there or there. With that being said, I'll catch you in the next one.